Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at assumptions of the demand and supply model, mark equilibrium, and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. Okay, so we've talked a lot about demand and we've talked a lot about supply, but now we're going to start to put them together to build our demand and supply model. However, as we discussed previously, when we're talking about models, we're going to have to deal with a couple of assumptions so that we can model our demand and supply together. So let's start off with our first assumption, which is that we assume that the goods represented in the supply and demand diagram must be identical. So when we're talking about the supply and demand for a good, these goods are the same. Now, again, just in reflection, we know that in reality that there are many types of cars which formulate the car market. However, in economic theory, we assume that all cars in the car market are identical. And therefore, this means that the price of all the cars will be equal as well. For the price of cars to be equal, however, uh, we also assume that all consumers and producers have complete knowledge about the car they are buying or selling. So, for example, everyone should be able to know about the quality of the car engine and that it's not going to break down. And this is going to be very important as if there is imperfect information in the market, there will be a variety of different prices for an identical car. So if this car is slightly worse, then it could be worth less. But if it's perfectly pristine, then actually it's worth more. So then we're breaking one of our first assumptions, which is that all the cars are identical and therefore have the same price. So furthermore, as we are simplifying a situation which is quite complicated in real life to formulate our model, we must go a little bit further and talk about our market, which has producers and consumers in and it's the collective group of all of these people that builds our market. So let's try and build this assumption and we're gonna build it through an example first to define our assumption. So imagine someone decides to buy a hoodie as they're going on holiday to a cold country. This means that their individual demand for hoodies has increased. But what does this mean for the market? Well, in the market, this does not cause a market demand curve to shift outwards as his individual demand is very small in comparison to the entire market. So this is to say that each individual is very small and that their influence on the market is almost negligible. So the market is left unaffected. However, if the market moves together in the fact that everybody decides to wear a hoodie or decides to increase their demand for a hoodie, then we would say that the market demand curve would shift. So that leads us to our assumption, which is that individual demand will not influence price and consumers and producers are therefore price takers, which is to say that individually we can't move up and down our own individual demand curves. We just have to take the price of something in the market, which is a pretty good assumption seeing as an individual, as much as I would like, say, the price of a new phone to go down, I can't influence that price. So now we get to talk about our market equilibrium. So we have seen that a market is when consumers and producers come together to exchange their goods and services at a certain price. And this concept should be pretty familiar now where our market is built up of our buyers and our sellers, otherwise known as our consumers and our producers. So let's just build our example. So first, let's talk about our consumer's demand curve. Well, we've already talked about how a demand curve looks and it's gonna be this downward sloping line like this. Then we have our supply curve and our supply curve, as we've already talked about, is this upward sloping line that looks like that. So now that we have these two together, we can put together our market demand and supply curve together. And let's think about why we can do that. The reason we can do that is because they're both using the same variables of quantity and price. So our supply and demand model, when we put our curves together, will look like this. This is what our supply and demand model is going to look like. We have both of our supply lines and our demand lines on the same graph. Right, so what can we learn from this then? So it is the point in which the curves are going to cross, which is where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. So then that means on this curve, we would say where they cross, the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. So QD is equal to QS. And this 
actually occurs at a very specific price, which we call the price equilibrium, which is also the quantity equilibrium, where quantities minus and quantities supplied equal the same, given the price equilibrium. And this is where we say that the market is in equilibrium. We say it's in equilibrium because at this point, all the goods are sold and consumed and there's nothing left over. So there's no oversupply and there's no under demand or over demand and everybody is satisfied with what they have because in the demand curve, the market demand curve, we're demanding this much and the producers are supplying that much and therefore we are consuming and demanding everything that we want and at a given price as well. So we talked about price determination when it came to exchanging in a market where for an exchange to happen, a price was necessary. And this is how we've determined our price in the market. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.